We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped you. You may please have our seats this morning. Thank you for coming out again. I'd like to welcome every one of us. Uh, a special welcome to all of my friends in the house. And to Mr. Koka, he was one of our speakers last year. Thank you so much for coming with your wife again. Praise the Lord. Okay, so without much further ado, Mama is in our midst. I won't call her missus. So there's no need to. I, when I when I was when I finally got through, I told um, Regina, and she was so so, so amazing. Please a hand a round of applause to Regina. Happy. Year. She was so amazing. I said, send me a brief profile. <laughs> I know why I said a brief. And then she sent me <laughs> what she sent me. I said, this cannot be brief now. But anyway, there's no need to be reading profile. How many of you agree with me? There's no need to read profile now. When the, you know, yes, yes. Now. So please, with Jesus' joy, can we rise up this morning and welcome Mama. <laughs> Awoshika into our mess.
Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I testify that you and you alone, you are my God. You are my King. You are my Redeemer. You are my strength. You are my shield. You are my way maker. You are my everything. But for you, Father, where will I be? Obeninija keru obonija. Oloru. Abiyama odioru. The God that was, that is, and that will forever be. Nemo shente moro. Nemo shanda. Kahunu maria kasanda boguria. Nema sonto robo kahini maria kasunt. Nema li kasunt. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah. tells you that the battle is whose? It's the Lord's. He says you will eat, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. He didn't say you will eat the good of the, the land because you would have labored for it. If you are willing and you are obedient, you want to look at a woman like Deborah? She was willing to serve the Lord. She was obedient to the instructions of the Lord. And because she was, in a time and a season when men of today or people who lack understanding will tell us that, oh, women were not to be seen or heard. Or women have limitations of what they can do. God has shown us examples across the length and breadth of the Bible to ensure that you, as the female, it's okay, don't worry, I'll go up and down. As the female hand of God, do not confuse the matters. 
that you have clarity in your heart that you have been called of God that you are empowered by God that the mandate on your life is not illegal that there isn't a thing that is too big for you to do that there is nothing that God isn't able to call you to that there isn't a position an office an assignment that is too big for a woman Deborah was the judge of God's people Israel She didn't just act as judge. She acted as counselor. She sat over them in matters of state. She acted as commander of the army. There was a military commander. But the one with the call and the anointing of God to command had to go for the military commander to function. Read it well. So, I'm starting at the top of the assignment. Because the first thing I want you to know is, if your mind is limited by your own understanding of who God has called you to, then you haven't read your Bible well. It's true. Because if you have read your Bible well, then you know that when God had to plan how to save humanity, after the fall, one he trusted the most to carry the promise to hold his own son and not foil God's plan when in a business you develop your strategy you're looking for trusted hands that you can share it with who can handle your corporate secret and not sell it to another for money and betray? You want the ones that will be responsible in managing that information and the process of execution. See, right now, if you've been following, Twitter wants to sue Facebook or whatever their new name is. Meta. Why? Because they say they have still copied them. That they have hired their staff who understood what so there will be a war of the text who cares so it's a it's the way of men and the way of life but God had his biggest secret and he needed two women one to carry the forerunner Elizabeth and one to carry his son His entire plan was based on their functioning properly, being compliant to his will, his word, his instruction, and being women that could be trusted. And yet, they did not fail God. There's a part of the Bible that has excited me for the last Sorry, I tend to just run off. We'll come back to... You want to sit down? You can. Sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me read something for you. Because the first thing I want you to understand is who you are as a woman in the hands of God as opposed to who the world has told you that you are. And since you chose Deborah as your personality, you made my life easy. Because she's the most perfect example of what God means. If you go home, read Numbers 27, verses 1 to 7. I want you to read about Zelophehad. Numbers 27, 1 to 7 presents you a scenario where women were not allowed to own land. In fact, in Israel, a woman was treated like the property of her father and was then transferred to her husband via a bridal payment. Do they not pay bridal price in Nigeria? Not much has changed. 
In their humility and wisdom, the five daughters of Zelophehad influenced the making of a new law by God to allow women to own land. It didn't exist before. But just to show how much God considered women and handled women, these daughters of Zelophehad, who lived at the end of Israelites' exodus from Egypt with their father, but as they traveled through the lands, you know, people died as they were wandering, getting lost in the promised land, trying to find their footing. If you read Numbers 26, 1 to 4, you find that there. I'm just laying foundation for you. Go home and do your own work. And their father died. It was one of those who died. And then it was decided that they would do a new census to count the children of Israel. But the households were, lit, were counted based on the male members of the household. Their father had five daughters. No son. So they realized that they'd be counted out. That no land will be allocated to them in the promised land, even though there were five daughters of a man. Hmm. When his daughters realized that their father's name would be excluded when the land was given out because there was no male heir, they did an extraordinary thing that had not been heard of before. It's never been done. Who cares? Nobody has ever done this before. So what? My father didn't know. <laughs> God's beginning is every day. Depending on his agenda. They that know they are God. I hope when I leave here, if you know nothing else, you know who your God is. And in knowing him, you will know you. Because when you know your source, you will understand yourself better. And once you do, bring it on. Becomes a challenge. Because you can take anything on. Because you know who you are and who you are. And you're not intimidated or afraid. They asked Moses, Eleazar the priest, the chiefs and the whole assembly, even though it never happened before, they were not afraid. Courage belongs on the heart of women who know their God. Because if you lack courage, you can never take the land. Every place you would want to occupy has an occupant. But if the Lord has called it by your name, he will displace for you to occupy. But you must have the courage to step forward. Because until you step out, God can do nothing, even though he wants to. But the Bible says, whatsoever you put your hands to do, that's what the Lord will perfect. So until you put your hands to do, God can't do nothing. If you put your hand to do nothing, God can only do nothing for you. Simple math. Zero times zero is what? Zero. End of story. Anyway, they went to Moses, went to Elazar the priest, went to the chiefs and the whole assembly for their right to inherit their father's property. In humility, I repeat, in humility, Moses brought the matter to God. How did Deborah know that they should go to war? It was in the place of the presence of God. She was instructed. So the woman that will be like Deborah will be what? A woman of the presence of God. A woman who understands that the, all the wisdom of the world that she has is nothing compared to 0, 0.00000 something percent of divine wisdom that she will receive or divine instruction that she will receive in any situation. And therefore, she would have humility like Moses and Deborah. 
And she would always, no matter what the matter is, big or small, it would become your way of life. You know, one of the tiniest things I've found how to apply God to is when I lose something. Even if I'm trying to put on my earring and a gold stud falls to the ground in the middle of a lot of stuff, and you know it's one of the most difficult things to find, because once it hits the ground, you don't know where it bounced to. I have learned how to say, Lord, the axe head floated. If the axe head floated, then whatever this thing is, it will float for me. So Father, take my eye to exactly where it is. I promise you, I have a 100% record of finding things that seem lost and missing. Always. So every time, you know, people are looking for something around, I say, okay, pray the accent prayer. Because it has worked for me, always. Because once you find a rema in the Bible, you must run with it. Of what use is it if you find it and you don't use it? It's like being hungry, finding a bar of gold in your house and then putting it back on the shelf and sitting down crying that you're hungry. That's madness. It's really, what do you study the word of God for? It is to profit from its wisdom. It is for you to take on the wisdom of the word of God and war with it. You war, you run through the face of the earth with the secret weapon of the word that you have discovered. And I dare the enemy that will stand in your way. <laughs> so, in humility, the great and mighty Moses, even though these women were asking him for what had never happened before, didn't say to them, oh, you know, we don't do that. It never happened here. It cannot happen. That would be an arrogant position, speaking for God when God has not spoken. So all of us must be weary that we do not speak for God when God has not spoken. Because we can become arrogant in our knowledge as mothers, as wives, as bosses. We just say, no, 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 we don't do that here. Psh. Don't, haven't, is meaningless to God. There's always a first time. That's all I'm trying to show you. A moment where things didn't exist before. But even in a case that is so embedded in tradition, God showed up for the daughters of Zelophehad. In humility, Moses brought the matter to God. God responded that the plea of the daughters was just. So if you come from any of those Nigerian tribes where they dispossess the women when the husbands die, now you have a scripture to fight. Yes. If you come from any part of this country, where anybody says, because you're a daughter of the house, you have no inheritance. They don't know you. Because they don't know your God. By the time you're done, they will beg you with inheritance. But you must be able to take the word of God. You don't fight them in the physical. You go back to the place of your power. And you cause the God that rules in the affairs of men to come and set everybody straight so that it can realign the situation for your good. The Bible tells us that God is just. And he said, the pleas of the daughters of Zelophehad was just, and that they should be granted their father's inheritance. Because they had the courage to speak up, because they had the courage to ask what had never been done before was done for them. A law that didn't exist in the ways and the living of the Israelites became established because these five daughters felt their father deserved his own portion. And even though they had no male heir, they believed that God is a just God and spoke up. And because they spoke, the Lord honored their word. Now, let's go back to Deborah. That was a diversion. But to make a point. Now, if you read about Deborah yourself, and I don't want to, because it's an easy scripture for you to read from 4 to 10, I don't want to sit and reading the scriptures. I want to spend time making the points 
because that's most profitable for us. So I will sort of chronicle quickly, and then we'll have a conversation. So Judges 4.10 is what you need to read. Now, Deborah is, I want you to make note of all the roles that Deborah played. Deborah is a prophetess, which means she served as a servant of God, as the heir that perceives the heart and the word of God and is able to communicate to our community what the Lord is saying. Now, when you're a prophet for God, you're a woman or a man of God's presence. You're a woman or a man in submission to God. Because except you can submit your spirit, you cannot hear God. You're a woman or a man in obedience to God. Because except you're in obedience, you will speak your thoughts. You will judge the word of God. As you receive it, you say, ah, but God, this cannot be right. Oh, but God, this should not be so. You will judge the word of God and you will speak your own opinion rather than the word of God. So Deborah was a prophet of God. And God will continue to use you as a prophet only as you continue to be a person that can be trusted. So what this tells us is that she continued to be a woman that the Lord could trust. So she remained in her office as a prophetess. It says to us as well that Deborah is the wife of Lapidoth. What was the relevance of telling us that? Because he could just have reported it to us that she's a female, but she's a judge. And would have missed out on the fact that though she was a woman in a place of power and position, the judge of the people at that point was like the president of the land. But yet, the Bible wants us to know that she had other roles. And in her role, one of them is as a wife. And wife of Lapidot. Why was it important to name her husband? It's like saying, you know, this is the daughter of uh, Abdul Noshud, they call her. When you say that, when you refer to that, it's because there's something to be... to take pride in, in that situation. It's like saying, oh, have you met my son? This is my son. You say that when you're proud of your child. The one that is giving you troubles. You will gladly grease people and act like he's not there. Because you don't want to explain. So in referring to her here, identifying her, identifying her husband, is to tell you, you can go and check the records. She's truly the wife of Lapidot and the mother of whoever her children were. But obviously, she was a woman who played her role as a wife. And her role as a judge or as a prophetess did not interfere or did not disqualify her to be a wife. Why is that important? Well, perchance something that some women should just be kept indoors. Now, if you feel you have been called to be a housewife, good for you. As long as you have conviction in your heart that that's the place of your calling, you will prosper in it. There will be a ministry in that office of being a housewife in your husband's house. There will be assignments that nobody else will be able to comprehend that you will. And it will be clear to you and there will be lives that you will impact and that you will transform. Because that is the place of God's calling and assignment for you. However, just because some are called to that does not now give you the authority to compel every other woman to that. Why? Because the God that made Deborah is the God that made Mary whose assignment for God in the same scriptures was to birth the savior of humanity. It's the same one that made Elizabeth whose assignment, only recorded assignment in the Bible was to bear God, Jesus' forebearer. A traditional role of a woman is what those two women were recorded for. And yet they are honored in it. Why? Because that's what the Lord assigned them to. Don't mix things up. But the reason the Bible presents us with multiple scenarios is for us to understand 
that you cannot box God and his agenda where women are concerned. But worse still is for women themselves to box themselves. That is the biggest disaster of all. It's enough that some people out of lack of wisdom and knowledge and understanding decide that this is who a woman should be. Woman is the description of one woman. God knew what he was doing when he made 50% of the population of the world women. I mean, the saddest place on the face of the earth to live right now is for a woman is where? Afghanistan. Because the women do not exist. There are women there, but by their rulers, they don't exist. Because the day you even decide that even hairdressing saloon should be cancelled for women, what do you mean? They don't exist. You don't want them to have any means of income or any place of interaction. When you say somebody's face should not be seen, they don't exist. You cancel their identity. Even the animals that you buy, they didn't cover their faces. How much more? The creation of God. So, what the Bible is showing us is different scenarios. And it's telling you that there are those who are called to power. There are those amongst women that are called to rulership. There are those who are called to service of God in the ministry. Deborah alone exemplifies multiple roles that women can represent. And yet, she exemplifies that in some women, you will find all the roles in one woman. And it's not a crime. Can I have it all? It's a stupid question. I get asked often. Yes. Why? Because women doubt all the time whether they can be a ruler like Deborah was, whether they can be a teacher like she was, whether they can be a counselor like she was, whether they can be a general like she was, whether they can still be a mother and a wife. Well, I didn't write the Bible. And it's not my Bible we're reading. You have yours. So read it. If it's the same word, except you think that God is a liar or the account is wrong, then something is wrong with your view if it's contrary to the view of God. So what does that tell you? What is the assignment on your life? What is the call of God on your life? Where have you been sent to? Where, what is the limit you have placed on you? Where are the doors that are open before you that you have not taken because you think it's too much for you because you're a woman? The only difference between a man and a woman is the womb. And is the symbol of God's trust. The womb is the symbol of God's trust. Why? His code to ensure the continuity of humanity is hidden in the woman. But beyond that specific assignment, I have a brain. Somebody else has a brain. There are four of them in my house. My husband and three sons. I'm the only girl in our house. We all have brains. Last I checked, everybody has two hands. The last I checked, we all have two legs. Last I checked, Every girl that went to school and sat in a classroom in a mixed school is learning exactly the same thing, not something different. Last I checked, from secondary to university and all of that, every profession, there are women there. There might not have been enough in some classes because culture shaped the thinking and the ways women chose their options because they thought certain things were not for girls. But you know, I was watching CNN early this week, and I saw that the chief of scientific research for NASA is a woman, Nicola Fox. And she talked about space and space science and work with so much excitement and enthusiasm that you will know that she was born to do what she's doing. But 
when it mattered, the world had to acknowledge she was the best for the assignment. So it's not whether you're a girl or that you're a boy. It is that do you understand what the Lord your God has called you to? Are you obedient to his voice enough to follow him? Do you have the discipline of preparation to ensure that you are qualified for the assignment? Are you pursuing being the best in the place that the Lord has called you to that you may please him? Because the most convenient thing for Deborah to do was to tell uh, Barak that you are the general. Me, my role as a judge is here. Why am I going to follow you to war? Self-protection. But she understood her God. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. And she hears God in motion. How do I know she hears God in motion? When Barak said that he wasn't going except she went with him, she immediately could respond that I will go with you. However, the victory will be given to a woman and not to you. That was not part of what she had heard God before. When she gave him the message, it didn't include that part. And when he made a demand, she could immediately hear God and respond. And if you read the Bible, your first instinct is you're thinking Deborah is going to be the woman that will take the victory. But she knew it was not her. Where are you called to? Are you willing and obedient? Have you accepted your call? Do you understand that you can be everything the Lord has called you to? You can be a wife and be successful. You can be a mother and be successful. You can be a warrior king and be successful. You can be a minister of the gospel and be successful. You can be an asset of value to your community successfully. And yet you're a child of God that is unwavering in your journey with the Lord. One role does not disqualify you from the other. There isn't a conflict in your multiple calls. As long as he's of the Lord. All Deborah had was that she knew that the Lord had called her to her role. You see, it's one thing to be called, it's another to occupy it. Many people do not occupy their calling. If you don't own it, and occupy it, you cannot walk in it. Why? You will keep second guessing yourself. The supposed imposter syndrome will rule your life. Meanwhile, it is meaningless. Who is an imposter? Are you a shadow of something sitting in somewhere? You're a real human being in a place. Are you afraid? Fear is healthy. It keeps you humble. So fear is not the problem. Do it afraid. Why? How many times? The Bible says fear not. Why do you think God kept saying it? Because he knows you're going to have to fight fear. That's right. That's right. But he's not saying, okay, don't be afraid. He's reassuring you every time he said, fear not, fear not, fear not. Because he knows you're going to encounter this fear multiple times as you walk through the journey. But every time you get to the place of fear, remind yourself, that the greater one dwells where? On the inside of you. And the one that dwells on the inside of you, the Bible says he does what? He rules in the affairs of men. The one that dwells on the inside of you says, wherever the soles of your feet shall touch, I have given to you for a possession. Why? You do not take one step that God does not take with you, except you are outside of the will of God. My biggest confidence always when I know I am in the will of God, I am unafraid, even when fear comes. Why? I push through the fear, knowing that when I take a step, what is missing at the point of taking the step, God will provide as I take the step. I told you, Deborah could hear God in motion. 
We receive the grace for the assignment of God in motion. This is where you are today. This is where the Lord has called you to now. He looks big and daunting. But you know in your heart, you're on assignment. Make the move. Why? Until you move, God cannot move with you. I have one great conviction in my heart. And that is that everything that I need to fulfill every assignment of God in my life, from the day I was born to the day I will die, God has already given it to me. However, I will not occupy all of it at the same time. So the provision is along my path. But if I do not take the step on the path, I cannot take it. You know how many people play video games? Okay. You have some young girls. They're, they're shy to let you know. Don't be ashamed. If you are not, you are not committing crimes with it, it's, it's part of the fun of life. And it's technology. So you know how when you're playing the games, when you get to certain stages, you get some bonus treasures or something. Along the way, there are things you pick up. Picture that and picture your journey with God. Every time, everything you need, this is your path, here to there. The path in your video game is prepared. The treasures are there. It's, it's laid there. If you get to it, you will take it. If you don't, it remains. That's your life. God has prepared your journey from beginning to the end. He has made all the provision. He has laid your path with everything that you will need. Every diamond, every jewel, every help, every love, every encouragement, every errand and all for the places that seem like the places of human judged failure. Because me, I don't believe in failure. Why? I either win or I learn. Every place that man calls failure is a process, is a place of preparation for me. That's how I see it. What do you see? And as you go up, when you get to where this treasure is, you take it. Why? Because you need it in the next place. And then there's a gap. You're going, using the asset you have. It looks to you like there's nothing. But grace follows you. Provision comes. Men, you meet helpers along the way. Why? Because God already prepared them. I have seen God in some ways that you have seen. But God, how did you know I will get here? How did you know I will need this? If you can trust him. If you can walk with him. If you can wait for him. If you can follow his word. If you can follow his voice. If you can be disciplined to remove yourself from the things that will take you out of the way. When you're following the game, they're always the enemies that want to kill you. They're there. They're the enemies in the path of your life. Waiting to kick you off the rail. Waiting to derail you. Sometimes you will get derailed. But the grace of God is sufficient for you. Because even when you die in those your games, sometimes you can restore. Yes. You can go and buy life. You can do all sorts. See, I'm a mother of only boys. I know all those things. I had to, you know, from buying all the, I, don't, I can't even know how many PlayStation or the handheld or whatever we bought until I said, you know what, I'm done. But they're still buying, you know, even the big boys are still buying full Nintendo. Something just came out. Somebody wants to buy something. You go and buy it yourself. I'm, not, I'm done buying those things. All I'm saying to you is, life copies God. Life tries to mimic God. Deborah only had a few things. One, she didn't limit herself. Nor did she allow the time and the season to limit what she could do by saying to her, in Israel of old, that you can only be the wife of Lapidoth. She didn't take that. Because she knew she was called to more. 
And as she rose into her office as the judge that the Lord had called her to, she proved herself and the whole community then recognized the hand of God. If you don't stand up to be counted, nobody will recognize your gift. So it's okay to be smart, to be brilliant, to be able, but to say, I'm quiet. I didn't like my privacy. I like, I'm like, okay, die inside your house. Because it's useless what you have if nobody knows you have it. People who have less than you will occupy the space you should occupy. So I'm not saying be arrogant. I'm saying own your space. Own your space. You must never be bashful about establishing who you are. Oh, who can do this? Oh, I can. So you are looking to the left, to the right. Ah, don't let me say I can. No. So everybody. Then the person that can do half of you will say I can. And after they have given it to the person, you say, ah, and I can do that or plus more. You are probably the one that will now, if that person is smart, it will quickly bring you in as assistant to help achieve the work. <laughs> yes. But he will get the credit. Or she will get the credit. That's what girls do. They give up their space for others. There's nothing. God cannot help you. If you have a voice you do not use. So spend time. Understand who you are in the presence of God. And every part of you that you come to reality with. Own. Own it. Run with it. Establish it. Speak for it. Claim it. When opportunities come that will facilitate it, do not be bashful. I'm not afraid to occupy anywhere. Why? I occupy anywhere and anything in the name of the Lord. End of story. I know that I'm on assignment. If I'm sent anywhere, I know that God has a purpose in it. So I'm not afraid of the places. Why? Because except that place is bigger than God, can never be bigger than me. I might not fully understand it now, but I know that the Lord and I together, we're a team. When I get in, everything will come together. And I'm humble enough to accept that. And that includes that I accept human help because you can be depending on God and be foolish to think I'm not going to depend on any man. You are foolish because God isn't coming down. He's going to use men and women around you to help you. Deborah is your example of the woman that God has made with total assignment. But she, she represents a certain kind of woman. Some women... That's not their, their calling isn't all of that. Their calling is a part of it, but whatever part yours is, the fullness of the purpose of God is in it. And what you need to know is how does that place work totally for the purpose of God. My time is out, so I'm going to go. But I just want you to know that you, you decide how far you can go with God by the choices you make every day. Lessons from Deborah. I'll just run through that quickly. If you read Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for good work. One, her leadership qualities. So, you're not a servant. You're a servant of God. But being a servant of God, you can lead in any space in his name where the Lord has assigned you to. That's what something Deborah showed you. That's a woman, I can be a leader of any space of my assignment. And our spaces are different. So I do not compare my place of assignment with another. It's about where I am assigned to and how I lead in the name of the Lord. And what does it mean to lead in the name of the Lord? It's your values. It's the things you do. 
the way you conduct yourself in the place of leadership, if there's one more person left on the face of the earth, who needs to hear the gospel? And you're the last person left to preach it. Based on how you conduct yourself, will the person ever receive the gospel from your lips? That's your everyday question. You must never lose sight of it. Because once you cannot answer that question, you're off the assignment. Because the assignment of God centers around one goal, the salvation of men and nothing more. That's everything. In a boardroom, in the marketplace, in a doctor's room, in a nursing station, any assignment that you occupy, ultimately God's goal is the salvation of souls, the reconciliation of men to him. You must find how the place you sit serves that purpose of God. If it doesn't, you're out of it. Because it's easy to turn the place of God's service into a secular place of service. Yet, every, pla every secular place of service is God's space. Because the Bible says, God rules in the affairs of men. Every place you occupy is a pulpit. But are you acting like a pastor there? Or are you waiting to judge your pastor in church? Because you will be judged by the space that you occupy as well. Spirituality have been deliberate in our action of inquiring before God on matters of all times. Seek the voice of God. Seek the instructions of God. It might look like it, but it might not be it. What worked yesterday will not necessarily work tomorrow. So the solution of yesterday is not your solution for today. Just because God took you through one route yesterday does not mean that's the route you should walk. And just say, oh, you know, yesterday the Lord told me to, and then you do that. No. If you're really in submission to God, you will go back and say, okay, Lord, today, should I, what should I do? Same problem. What is the solution? Remember Isaac and his father. One, go to Egypt. One, stay in the land. Same situation. Two different times. Two separate instructions. You don't control God. God controls your affairs. So you can't dictate to him what he should do. You must know that. Have faith in the received word and our obedience in following all instructions to the letter. Her skillful exploits were unusual to be called by self-smartness. We're brilliant, yeah. I'm brilliant. I'm smart. But you know what my biggest smart, smartness is? That I'm smart enough to know that I need God every day. In the eyes of men, I am brilliant. And I am brilliant. I'm smart, yes. But my smartest move always is to know that the place of my strength and my source is before God. So I will go before him always. That's my secret weapon to get the wisdom. Wisdom. Presiding as a judge of a people or a nation while in their most difficult time is a difficult task. Her wisdom was backed by spiritual insight. No matter what it is, always pray for the wisdom of God. But you must also be someone willing to listen because the wisdom of God is guided by the instructions of God. Courage. The courage to step in for her tribe, clan and people while not leaning on her own understanding. Sometimes it's difficult. It looks impossible. It looks like something that no one's done before, like the daughters of uh, Zelofi had. But who cares? Anything, as long as God is leading you, can be done. There's a beginning of something every day. And as long as God is in it, God rules in the affairs of men. He can choose to begin a new thing. And what we will call a new thing is something God's, God has hidden. And in the path of your game, you discover. It's like, ah! Look, the whole world right now thinks they have just discovered cobalt in DRC. To create the next generation of batteries for all the tech and everything for the next world, only one place in the world has it. In Africa and it's DRC. You think he just came there. It was there for all times, but it wasn't needed before now. Now, God has created, has brought science to a place of need for what the Lord had already hidden. Treasures of darkness, riches of secret places of the earth. They exist. 
God is not just creating new things. You know, the Bible says day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, job complete. What we are discovering is what God knew is there. Which is why he's, he can cost a poor man. The Bible tells us that God is the one. Is this Second Samuel? That God is the one. First Samuel 2. God is the one that can take a man from abject poverty and put him on what? On the throne. Why? Revelation. What existed that nobody knows at that moment, if he decides, okay, ah, Bumi, it's time to put you on the throne. It will reveal to you what will move you from where you are to where you are. Joseph moved from prison to the throne. Yet, his siblings thought they killed him. But they sent him to his destiny. His boss's wife thought she punished him. And they sent him to prison. But every stage of it was a step closer to the place of his throne. And then when it was time, the Lord opened the door and took him out of the grounds and put him in a high place. Shall we rise? I promise you I'll be gone in a few minutes. I just, I made up my mind in the last so many weeks that I will not speak or preach anywhere without making an altar call anymore. No matter what, as long as it's a Christian gathering, it will be done. Namely, I do not want one person who has the opportunity to go to heaven to miss it. So I'm going to make, we're going to have this conversation. And then I am free, it's all on you, whatever it is you choose to do. If you know that as you stand here today, if the sound was to come and we have to go to heaven, all of us, if you know that you're ready and you're going to heaven because you're in Christ, sit down majestically. If you like, lie. Because that's not my problem. It's true. It's not my problem. It will be between you and God. All I can tell you is that one day, this was me. This very smart, cheeky Muslim girl. And one day, Christ found me. And I had the wisdom and the smartness to accept Christ into my life. Every story that I have is based on thereafter as the Lord has journeyed with me. So I can promise you one thing that from the journey of 30 something years with Christ I know that a relationship with Christ is life. It's not religion. And therefore the choice is yours. If you choose Christ this morning you will never regret it. That I can tell you. You can be challenged if I tell you we never have challenges in your life, they're lying to you. And I will not tell you that. Because I know that when you're working the purpose of God, the enemy will try. But then you will not be fighting alone. You will fight with God in your corner. And I dare the one that wants to fight. Which means the most difficult to fight against is Jehovah. So if you'd like to give your life to Christ, please, just oblige me. One minute will be done. Step forward. But if not sit down. Thank you very much. God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. That's all I can tell you. God will bless you. God will bless you. The Lord will bless you and he will do for you what only he can do. Nemo Shantaka God bless you. Just look at me and say this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. I break every covenant that I was involved in before today. And I walk into the covenant based on the broken body and the shed blood of Christ. And I receive the grace never to look back from today till the end of my days. In Jesus name my Lord and my God I thank you for your children I thank you I thank you I thank you because I know that there's rejoicing in heaven today I commit each and every one of them to you I ask oh Lord that your hand will come upon them that you will anoint them afresh that you will renew them that your mandate upon them will be established that you will send them every help that they need in every way that you will lead
lead them in the way to go. That they will hear a voice telling them which way to go. Whether to turn to the left or to turn to the right. That they may walk in it. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much.